how do we pray the rosary and also the corresponding prayers. So let us begin. And on the crucifix, what we do is we make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the crucifix, we also recite the Apostles' Creed. And then what we do on the next large bead or a Benedict medal, you say an Our Father. And following that, you say three Hail Marys. And sometimes what we do with the Hail Marys, we say in honour of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Then we say the, the Glory Be. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Then what we do, we announce a mystery. So depending on the day of the week, every day has a different mystery. So we announce the mystery. And the mystery, let's say, for example, it might be Monday. And Monday would be the joyful mystery. So we say the first joyful mystery is the Annunciation. We might have a little reflection by saying it's when our, the angel Gabriel came down to Mary, announcing to Mary that she would be the mother of the saviour of the world. And there's sometimes there, we say there's a fruit of that mystery. And in this particular mystery, the fruit of the mystery, humility. And so we begin by, as we're praying our Father on the first bead, then we say ten Hail Marys. Ten Hail Marys, and we reflect on that particular mystery of the events that happened in that particular Annunciation. And then at the end of that, we say, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Then we say the Fatima prayer, and this prayer is, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are in most need of your mercy. Then we announce the second mystery. And this particular case we're doing Monday, the joyful mysteries. And the second joyful mystery is the visitation. And we do the same cycle again until we reach the end. Until we reach the end, then we say the Hail Holy Queen, the Salve Regina. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope, etc. And then we finish it off by saying... Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And we say, let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death and resurrection, etc. And then we have an option, we can add the, I actually add, usually add the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel, or sometimes people might add the Memorari prayer as well. And we have some one of those prayers in the actual booklet, the PDF, Catholic Tradition Prayer and Devotion. And that's basically all there is to it. It usually takes anything between 15, depending how reflective you want to be and how slow you want to be, usually takes me to say the rosary roughly about 15 to 17 minutes as well. The beauty about the rosary is that our lady has made promises to St. Dominic and also to Blessed Alan de la Rouche. And she, I'm going to read out to you some of these promises. Number one. Whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. Two, I promise that my special pr protection and the greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. Three, the rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin and defeat heresies. For it will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities and will lift them to the desire of eternal things. Oh, that souls would sanctify themselves by this means. 5. The soul that recommends itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. Wow, that is powerful. Number 6. Whoever shall recite the rosary devoutly, applying himself to the consideration of its mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. God will not chastise him in his justice. He shall not perish by an unprovided death. If he be just, he shall remain in the grace of God and become worthy of eternal life. 
7. Whoever shall have a true devotion for the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. 8. Those who are faithful to recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his graces. At the moment of death they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. Number 9. I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. Number 10. The faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. Number 11. You shall obtain all you ask of me by the recitation of the rosary. Number 12. All those who propagate the rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. Number 13. I have obtained from my divine son that all the advocates of the rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of death. Man, wow. Having all of heaven with us at the hour of our death. Number 14. All who recite the rosary are my sons and brothers of my only son, Jesus Christ. And finally, devotion of my rosary is a great sign of predestination. Now, this is a a, a promise from the Queen of Heaven, not a promise from whoever it might be. And we know for certain that the Blessed Mother, our Lord, always remain true to their promises. And we will need to remain true to our promises in devoting this rosary. God be with you and may Our Lady of the Rosary be your guide throughout your life.